All right, so now we have the vocab. Let's figure out what's happening with this. All right, step one, identify the problem. Thank you, Captain Obvious, right? I mean, in order to do an experiment, we have to figure out what's happening. The deal with this is you need to be as explicit as possible. You're going to be as explicit as possible. And in the statement that you're laying out here, you need to identify the response variable and the population. Because what's my outcome? Right? That's what we want to figure out. What is going to be my outcome? That's a response variable. What am I getting out of this deal? And what's my population? Who are we actually doing the experiment on? Right? So what's the concept behind that? Then once we figure out what we're going to do, we have to identify what are going to be our pitfalls. So determine the factors that will affect the response variable. Right? Decide if there's anything to do with that factor. What will affect... The response variable. That's our question that we ask. And what can we do about it? What do we do about it? Is it something that we can actually control? Is it not? Is it just something that we know that's going to be there? Right? With those lurking variables kind of situation? Is it... Uh, is it something that we can control midway through the experiment? These are all questions that you need to be asking to figure out if there's something that can actually be pulled off there. All right. Then determine the number of experimental units. As many as possible. The more data you have, the more accurate your outcome will be. However, the main criteria is what do you have money and time to do? and time to do that's the real question all right what can you afford that's how many you can do basically and then determine the level of each factor so if we're looking at this then we want to say there is a control there are two ways to control these factors all right you can control pardon me there's two ways to determine the level of factors control and randomize and within control there are two ways to control you want to set the level of a factor at one value throughout the experiment. If you're not interested in the effects on their response, set the level of the factor at various levels interested in effects on their response variable. So do I need a control group and uh, another group so that I can see the difference between the two? Am I just doing an experiment on one group, right? That's what you want to determine. I'm just checking out this one group. I just need the information based on one thing. Okay. Do I want to see the effects? Then I have multiple various levels. That all makes an impact. You can randomize, which is randomly assign the experimental unit to treatment groups. Like if I don't need something that is specific that we're going for, then you can just work just totally random if I don't have to worry about it being controlled. All right. Then, so that's step four, set it up. And then step five is conduct the experiment. Actually do everything that it took you four steps to get together. Now we're going to pull it off. We're going to conduct that experiment. Replication occurs when each treatment is applied to more than one experimental unit. Right? Collect and process the data. That's doing the experiment. It's a little shorty thing that we're saying, but it's a big deal. All right? Whenever you're working through this. So if you have more than one experimental unit, then you have to make sure that you're doing the same thing to each unit. That's what that part is saying. Okay, then you test the claim, all right? And you do that with inferential statistics. It's the process in which generalizations about a population, generalizations about a population, I write so big, are made on the basis of results obtained from a sample. So I do all of this work. I do this experiment. I do all of this work. I collect the data on my sample. Then I say, oh, based on, I'm going to infer 
Based on this experiment, what's going to happen to the population, which we determined up here? I just took a sample of it, but now I'm saying based on my um, experiment, this is how it's going to affect everybody. All right? Those are the steps in designing an experiment. Now, let's look at different kinds here coming up.